I'm joined now by the feminist columnist of the New Statesman, Laurie Penny, who has received abuse on Twitter herself, and by Luke Gutos, who practices criminal law and writes for Spiked magazine. Um, Laurie Penny, are you taking this too seriously, or it is too serious? I think that quite a lot of people who are saying this is all too serious have no idea of the scale of misogyny on the internet. What's it's, happened to you? Um, personally, I have received rape threats and death threats, but I also receive emails. It's not just on Twitter. There have been dedicated hate sites uh, about people, fantasies about how like, they'd like to rape me and beat me up. And this is just an occupational hazard of being a woman in the public eye. I wrote a few years ago that having an opinion is now apparently the mini skirt of the internet. You know, you, you have an opinion as a woman on the internet and suddenly you're asking for it. You're asking for this kind of harassment and abuse. And it's not about freedom of speech so much as it is about silencing. I well, think uh, I we mean, the law should be <clears throat> protecting her. Well, there is a clear line between uh, legitimate debate um, and where the law well, steps in. Well, she's not describing that, is well, she? Well, let's, let's start at the beginning. There is no question that when direct threats of rape and violence are involved, the police can intervene. They have intervened in these cases. So um, it's not those kind of cases we're talking about. Trolling refers to an enormous range of online speech, not just the kind of thing that Laurie's talking about. It also refers to basically anything which is targeted to get an angry reaction from someone. Yeah, but this is beyond to... that. I mean, I mean, if you were threatened with rape, and men can be threatened with rape, I mean, you yes. would be extremely upset about it. Well, that's absolutely right. And, and each of she these... is. Well, absolutely. I'm sh... What I'm, upsets I've no doubt me, actually? Laura's upset um, about no, actually, um, we're, we're making this about me when actually it is about women on well, the internet it, it, in general. It's always useful of, to have somebody who is actually... What, what upsets me, though, really, is when I receive... I receive um, emails from young women in their early to mid-teens who are asking me for career advice and saying, you know, I want to write on the internet, I want to be a journalist or in the media, but I'm scared. And what am I going to say to those kids? What am I going to... Am I going to say, you know, it'll be fine? Have you, you tried to find out who these men are? Yes, sometimes I have. And who do they turn out to be? There are all kinds of people. There is no one stereotype for people who are trying. I think what we really need to understand, though, is that it's being set up as feminism versus freedom of speech and anti-censorship. And actually, what this is, is a freedom of speech issue. If you really care about freedom of speech, you should care about women who are being silenced online, being well, bullied into silence. And it's about you, people who don't want women to speak. You do care about freedom of speech. Absolutely. And I think Laurie's right in a narrow sense in that the way to deal with this is through more freedom of speech, through greater engagement with these uh, problems, through greater debate and broader public discussion. The way to not deal with it is by effectively attempting to regulate what can't really be regulated. People, when they get involved in the internet, they accept that they're engaging with a forum which is open. And um, the people that write to Laurie aren't seriously suggesting that they can go online and write online and be free from the possibility of being insulted or having yeah, but, but their hang on a minute. held up to ridicule. Twitter's not the first time the internet's been open to people to have a dialogue. I mean, Facebook and the rest of it. The abuse has not been on that scale anywhere else. Well, why, why on Twitter? I would disagree, actually, John. It has. It has been on that scale in many, many other forums. Twitter is being, is coming, um, is the focus right now. But on many, many forums of the internet, for as long as the internet has existed, there has been misogyny, and misogyny as a code of male-on-male -male behavior. But the problem exactly. is but, but now, let me get clear what that doesn't your, make it OK. What though. your response is, because you're sort of saying the law exists, the police can intervene if the word rape is threatened, etc., etc. Um, you would do nothing, then? Yes, I would do nothing. Um, I would let the police do their job in certain very narrow circumstances. And other than that, I would allow the, exist to exi the, the internet to exist in the form that it currently does, in an open forum. People tend to celebrate the internet because it's a robust and open forum in which some stupid things are said, a lot of stupid things are said, but also some really important well, things are said. And the reason why they're able to be said is that we have an unregulated space which people are free to engage with on their own terms, well, and not under the control of the state. But, you know, the, the newspaper industry is not regulated, but you don't get this there. Well, the British press is highly regulated, um, and it would well, be a disaster. Well, only by the libel laws, etc. Well, all sorts of different laws regulate the British no, but no, press. The whole, the whole issue of, of hacking and the rest of it really, in the end, goes back 
to the fact there's well, no regulation. You've just had a judge come out with a public inquiry which has said that, uh, that doesn't he is mean dealing there's any with regulation. The there isn't. Press. At the moment, must, there isn't. There is an enormous amount of regulation. What on really British concerns press. me is that you you are appearing relaxed about the state of misogyny and the state of violent woman hatred on the internet. Women and girls being targeted, being bullied well, into does silence. Does it depict a violent hatred of women in society? Yes, I think it does, and I think. Well, what why is, haven't we ever addressed that before? What is curious about the internet, and I'm glad you asked, is that. This kind of Germain Greer once said that uh, women have no idea how much men hate them because men talk about how, talk about women in this way in private. Now, thanks to the internet, actually we have a better idea of how men talk about women in private because the internet pretends it is a male-only well, space. Well, she, she, she is onto something there. M men basically resent women they think may put them out of a job. Well, putting it in the most general point. <laughs> That might be right, but the, the last place you should look for a proper social analysis or a reflection of what is going on in wider society is Twitter. One thing Twitter has done is given people the power to voice their opinions, almost always at a distance, almost always with no consideration as to how their opinions are going to be received. So it would be ridiculous to say that what is said on Twitter is some kind of accurate depiction of the social tensions that exist in wider society. No, yes, but we're... We're... Oh. Uh, we're, not, we're not saying that it's an accurate depiction, but what exists on the internet bleeds over into what exists off the internet. You can't just say it's not real. It's where we live and work. Laurie Penny and Luke Guitos both, thank you very much thank indeed. You.